Laser safety is a critical part of any university's laboratory safety program. The purpose of this laser safety program is to provide you with guidance in the safe use of lasers. It is designed for students and professors working with lasers and for others that can come into contact with laser radiation in the laboratory. More detailed safety information specific to your laboratory can be found in your laser safety manual. In addition to laser safety, this program will include a brief discussion on the classification of lasers. What is a laser? The word laser is the acronym for light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. A laser is a device which produces a coherent, directional beam of energy in the visible, infrared, ultraviolet, or far-infrared regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The two types of lasers that will be discussed here are the continuous wave laser and the pulsed laser. The continuous wave laser provides a continuous output of energy for a period of greater than or equal to 0.25 seconds. The pulsed laser delivers its energy in the form of a single pulse or a train of pulses with the pulse duration less than 0.25 seconds. Laser classes are assigned by the American National Standards Institute or ANSI. The ANSI Z136.1 standard was updated in 2007 and lasers purchased prior to this date may be labeled with the inappropriate hazard classes. Classifications including class 1 through class 4 with subclasses are based on a laser's capability to injure you. Any laser that is constructed or modified in the laboratory will be classified by your professor or the principal investigator. Class 1 lasers are low power lasers and laser systems that cannot emit radiation levels greater than the maximum permissible exposure. Class 1 lasers and laser systems are incapable of producing damaging radiation levels or causing eye and skin damage under normal operating conditions. Examples of this type of laser are those lasers used in compact disc players and laser printers. These lasers are exempt from any control measures. Class 1M laser systems are incapable of producing hazardous exposure conditions during normal operation unless the beam is viewed with an optical instrument such as a telescope. These lasers are exempt from any control measures other than to prevent potentially hazardous or optically aided viewing. This laser is also exempt from any control measures. Class 1M lasers are found in fiber optic communication systems and many military laser training devices. Class 2 lasers are visible, low power lasers and laser systems that emit radiation in excess of the maximum permissible exposure. Class 2 lasers are incapable of causing eye damage unless they are viewed directly for an extended period. Normal human blink reflex of about 0.25 seconds, otherwise known as aversion response, will usually prevent exposure. Examples of Class II lasers are those lasers used in the supermarket checkout counter and barcode scanners. Class II M laser systems emit in the visible portion of the spectrum 400 to 760 nanometers and eye protection is normally afforded by the human blink reflex, otherwise known as aversion response, for unaided viewing. However, a Class II M laser is potentially hazardous if viewed with certain optical aids. An example of a Class 2M laser is a leveling instrument used in the construction industry. Class 3 lasers are medium power lasers and laser systems capable of causing eye damage with short duration, less than 0.25 seconds, with exposure to the direct or reflected beam. This reflected beam can result from a specular surface such as a shiny, mirror-like surface. There are two subclasses of Class 3 lasers, Class 3R, and Class 3B. Class 3R laser systems are potentially hazardous under some direct and specular reflection viewing conditions. Even if the eye is appropriately focused and stable, the probability of an actual injury is small. This laser will not pose either a fire hazard or diffuse reflection hazard. Examples of Class 3R lasers include many laser pointers and construction alignment lasers. The higher power Class 3B lasers may be capable of producing a hazardous reflection from diffusely reflecting surfaces such as painted walls, 
white paper, or road surfaces. Examples of Class 3B lasers are the continuous wave argon lasers at 488 nanometers with radiant power of 0.5 watts or less and lasers used in therapeutic medicine. A Class 3B laser and laser systems are capable of eye injury under direct and specular reflection viewing conditions. Class 4 lasers are high power lasers and laser systems capable of causing severe eye damage with short duration less than 0.25 seconds with exposure to the direct, specularly reflected, or diffusely reflected beam. Class 4 lasers and laser systems are also capable of causing severe skin damage and igniting flammable and combustible materials. Examples of Class 4 lasers include the continuous wave argon laser at 488 nanometers with radiant power of greater than 0.5 watts and also those lasers used for cutting, drilling, marking, welding materials, outdoor light shows, and surgical lasers. These types of lasers may produce laser-generated air contaminants. Some examples of lasers include the argon, carbon dioxide, usually called a CO2 laser, copper vapor, gallium arsenide, helium cadmium, helium neon, mercury vapor, neodymium YAG, nitrogen, and rhodamine 6G. These are examples of a combination of gas, solid state, semiconductor or diode, and liquid dye lasers. Do you know which lasers you have in your laboratory? Lasers must be labeled to indicate the class and type of laser. A laser classification label must be conspicuously affixed to the laser housing. If you are using a laser, you must make sure that labels are current and legible. Lasers manufactured after August 1, 1976 should be classified and labeled by the manufacturer. All laser laboratories are required to have a laser area warning sign posted at each entrance to the laboratory to convey a rapid visual hazard alerting message. These signs include a warning and a triangle with an exclamation mark, a sunburst, and three locations for descriptive information and precautionary instructions or protective actions. The requirements for Class II and Class IIm lasers must include the word caution in the header and a safety alert symbol, which is a triangle with exclamation mark, to alert against a potentially hazardous situation which, if not avoided, can result in minor or moderate injury. Position 1 is located between the header and the sunburst. Position 1 on the sign should include special precautionary instructions or protective actions that may be applicable. These may include laser protective eyewear required, invisible laser radiation, knock before entering, do not enter when light is on, or restricted area. Alternatively, for Class II lasers, laser radiation, do not stare into beam, may be included at position 1. Position 2 is located under the sunburst. At position 2, the type of laser in use or the emitted wavelength, pulse duration, and maximum output should be specified. Position 3 is located in the lower right side of the laser warning sign. At position 3, the class of the laser or laser system should be specified. For laboratories with more than one laser, the laser with the highest classification should be listed. The header on the laser warning sign for Class 3R, Class 3B, and Class 4 lasers must include the word danger and safety alert symbol, which is the triangle with the exclamation mark, to alert against an imminently hazardous situation which, if not avoided, can result in serious injury or death. For Class 4 lasers, Position 1 may contain the words laser radiation, avoid eye or skin exposure to the direct or scattered radiation. For Class 3R lasers, Position 1 may include laser radiation, avoid direct exposure to the beam. In addition, for Class 3B lasers, Position 1 may contain the words laser radiation, avoid direct exposure to the beam. At Positions 2 and 3, the requirements for Class 3R, Class 3B, and Class 4 lasers must also include descriptive information 
and the class specification. At position 2, the type of laser in use or the emitted wavelength, pulse duration, and maximum output should be specified. At position 3, the class of the laser or laser system should be specified. For laboratories with more than one laser, the laser with the highest classification should be listed. A controlled laser area is an area subject to control and supervision for the purpose of protecting you from laser radiation hazards. A controlled laser area is required for Class 3B and Class 4 lasers. Laser devices should be located in an area solely designed for laser operations. Access to controlled laser areas requires the appropriate authorization from the lab manager or research director. The ANSI guidelines specify that access doors to a controlled laser area in which a Class 3B or Class 4 laser is being operated must be provided with entryway interlocks. Access to laboratories which are solely used for lasers or laser systems should be controlled. Only personnel who are authorized should be allowed access to such laboratories. All other laboratories which use lasers or laser systems should initiate special precautions to prevent unauthorized access to the lasers. Laser engineering requirements are another important part of laser safety. One laser engineering requirement is a protective housing. All classes of lasers and laser systems must have protective housing. Protective housings which enclose Class 3B or Class 4 lasers are to be equipped with a safety interlock system. This safety interlock system must be fail-safe and is to be activated when the protective housing is opened during operation and maintenance. If the safety interlock can be bypassed, it must have the appropriate warning label, Defeatably Interlocked Protective Housing. All Class 3B and Class 4 lasers or laser systems must be provided with a permanently attached beam stop or attenuator. The beam stop or attenuator must be capable of preventing access to laser radiation in excess of the maximum permissible exposure level. A Class 4 laser or laser system must have a master switch which is operated by a key or by a coded access such as a computer code that is clearly marked emergency stop to interrupt the laser beam. Even though it is not a requirement, a Class 3B laser should have the same switch. When the entire beam path is enclosed and the enclosure fulfills all requirements of a protective housing, the requirements of a Class 1 laser are fulfilled. In this case, no further controls are required. The use of lasers can present an electric shock hazard. This can occur from contact with exposed, energized parts, device control, or power supply conductors operating at potentials of above 50 volts. All laser system components must be properly grounded and all electrical wiring must meet the requirements of the National Electric Code. Laser systems must be marked with operating voltage, frequency, and power or current. Lockout, tagout procedures must be followed when maintenance on lasers is required. Other non-beam hazards include electrocution, which by the way is the second most often reported cause of laser accidents and the fifth leading cause of work-related injury or death in the U.S., and fires. In addition to personal protective equipment as set out in your chemical hygiene plan, some additional protective equipment is required when working with lasers. Although enclosure of the laser equipment or beam path is the preferred method of control to help minimize the hazard, Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, should still be employed. Laser protective eyewear should be worn whenever maximum permissible exposure levels may be exceeded. Since eyewear designed for protection at one wavelength may provide little or no protection at another wavelength, you should consult the laser eyewear manufacturers for proper selection and test data of protective eyewear for working with specific lasers. You should also consult the principal investigator or laser safety officer for assistance. Keep in mind that just because the goggles or spectacles are the right color does not mean they will stop the laser from entering and damaging your eyes. Laser protective eyewear must be clearly labeled with optical densities and wavelengths for which protection is afforded and it must be approved by the American National Standards Institute or ANSI. Protection for your skin can be afforded through the use of clothing and gloves that have been selected for suitable protection against laser radiation 
in order to cover normally exposed skin areas. Remember, protective equipment is no substitute for common sense and the use of good safety practices. Now we will discuss some safe work practices for Class 3B and Class 4 lasers or laser systems. As discussed earlier, appropriate warning signs must be posted at each entryway. You must be appropriately trained in laser safety and in the specific laser procedures that you will perform before operating any laser. Lasers must be under the direct supervision of an individual knowledgeable in lasers and laser safety. Lasers should be located so that access by spectators is limited. It is best to exclude visitors from laboratories in which Class 3B or Class 4 lasers are in use. Lasers in your laboratory must have any potentially hazardous beam terminated in a fire-resistant beam stop of an appropriate material. Lasers must have only diffusely reflecting materials in or near the beam path. You should avoid wearing jewelry, wristwatches in particular, and remove items from shirt pockets while working with laser beams and electronic components. Windows and doorways should be either covered with an appropriate absorbing filter or blocking barrier, or restricted in such a manner as to reduce the transmitted laser radiation to below the maximum permissible exposure. Class 3B and Class 4 lasers should be surrounded by light absorbing curtains. These curtains are usually black. The curtains should not be flammable or emit toxic byproducts or airborne contaminants following a laser exposure. An activated laser should not be left unattended without appropriate safeguards such as illuminated warning signs, blackout curtains, and door interlocks. Lasers and the optical components used with them should be properly secured. Remember that engineering controls such as interlocks, beam stops, signs, and activation warning systems are the first line of defense against laser hazards. Interlocks should never be defeated. Laser beams are to be positioned above the normal eye level of a standing person or below the normal eye level of a seated person. Appropriate eye protection should always be worn whenever Class 3B or Class 4 lasers are operated. You must be provided with and you must wear the appropriate eye protection. Never stare directly into a laser beam regardless of the class of the laser even if eye protection is worn. You can use an indirect means to observe the beam. Purchase and use certified Class 1 laser products when possible. Enclose as much of the laser equipment or beam as possible. Don't direct beam towards doors or windows. Don't locate beam at eye level. Terminate beams or reflections with fire-resistant beam stops. Utilize surfaces that scatter radiation and minimize specular reflection. In this program, we have covered major components of a laser safety plan specifically for universities. Additional and detailed safety information can be found in your laser safety manual. We hope that you can use this information to stay safe and healthy in your learning environment.